Hello guys, Leon Basden here. I'm an art director and motion designer, and today I wanna to give you a one week review of the MacBook Pro M1 Max for motion design. Over the past week, I've been using the 16 inch MacBook Pro every day in my production workflow. And I wanted to see how it handles Cinema 4D and After Effects. So today I'm gonna to show you Cinema 4D with X particles and Redshift. Also, I'm gonna show you how I composite in After Effects. So let's get into it. So for the first video, we're gonna see how X particles run. Um, I downloaded these demo scenes from the Insidium website. It's a pretty cool repository there, so you can download the test files to try for yourself. As you can see, it runs really well. I didn't even cache these particles. I just hit the play button and it just ran pretty well. And for this one, I did cache it. It was a, cause it was a heavy, heavy scene, but it managed to play back really well. Like the way they optimize these chips, I was so surprised the way it handled it at, as a live playback. Cinema 4D isn't known to handle such heavy simulations. For me, the, sh the scene that shot me the most was this one. Like it played this back so fluidly and take a look at the CPU usage on the top right. It's rarely using any, any of it. It's like, I wish this had an extreme mode where I can use more of like, like I can max out the CPUs because it's so optimized. Like I just kept cranking the particles up and up. Uh, just take a look for yourself. So I decided to triple the amount of particles and it still was playing it back. And if you know Cinema 4D, you know it's not that great in particles. And now I just put 10,000. I was like, okay, let's see how 10,000 works. And it handled it pretty well. And I was like, okay, take a look at, at the system usage right now. So now I just decided to go crazy. So just take a look at this. This is, this blowed my mind away. So now we are up to 50,000 particles. Can you imagine that? 50,000 live particles without cash. So let's go a little bit more crazy now. Can it handle this? Yes, you saw that correctly. I put a hundred thousand particles to run. <laughs> and this is when it finally got all cores going up. And you know what's the crazy part? The fans didn't even come on at this point. There's a hundred thousand live particles, not even cash. Just simulating while I just spin around the viewport. All right, so I just opened another scene and let's see how fast it cached this scene. Remember all of the scenes are, uh, it can be found in your X particles section of the website. Like if you subscribe to the X particle Insidium Fuse, you have access to their whole content library. So please take a look at that. All right, so let's speed this up a bit. And you can see it did all of this in about a minute and 20 seconds. But look at the playback on the viewport. Wow, yeah, is the viewport has never ran so clean in Cinema 4D. So as you can see, it handles everything's pretty well. Given that Cinema 4D has limited multi-core performance, everything was to the most part really good. It was definitely better than my desktop. Maxon had to optimize Cinema 4D for the M1 chip. And that's why us Mac users, we're getting better performance than the PC counterparts. But as always, 
I wanted to try to even push it a little bit further. What do I mean by further? I wanted to know is the performance of this laptop or marketing or can you actually create what's in the commercial with this particular laptop? And that's what I set out to do. So over the weekend, I gave myself a challenge. You have two days, how much could you do with using only the M1 Max for design? And how fast can you do it? So with staying at home, with me staying at home while my wife go do all the chores and stuff like that, with a baby by my side and one hand on my keyboard, I set out to create something. And believe it or not, it was, it came out pretty amazing. I would say for two days of work. So uh, let's check it out. We've created something wild. With a fire in its belly. This thing draws everything in. What have we done? And more importantly, what will you do? They weren't lying. I mean, given more time, more than 48 hours, and that, that's including render time, by the way. So given more time and a bigger budget and obviously more people, I can definitely see something like this being pulled off with computers like this. Minus the rendering part, but we get more into that later. So let's take a breakdown. Let's see a breakdown of this project and see what actually went into it. So I'll do a breakdown of one of my favorite scenes. For this one, I use a cloner, a cube and a cloner object and some field effectors to have the, the cloners rotate and scale. And here's where it gets really interesting. Look how well it plays this back. For a Mac computer to come this far, especially in a MacBook Pro, it's really astonishing because we haven't seen this in a while and the Mac users were really looking out for this. So take a look at this, right? This is literally all we ever wanted to be able to actually see renders at a decent speed. You know, this this is not a final render computer, but definitely for look development is it works really well. Like I am like I have particles, I have some not that crazy amount of geometry, but you know, things are going on here and I can just skip through this, take a look at what I'm doing and move on. And this is where the optimized software really shines because Cinema 4D is optimized for the M1. Also Redshift that is made by the same parent company, Maxon, is optimized for the M1. And you notice something since I started demoing the whole scene, it never crashed, not once. Here you can see I'm using a Dask, a character created in Dask 3D. And take a look at the, the amount of hair strands I have on here. It's a lot. And this kept crashing my Windows computer, but it actually works pretty decent here because it, it didn't crash. It might take a little long to load, but there wasn't a single crash. So this laptop itself is really good for look development. And don't mind the haircut. I'm not a barber, as you can tell. So After Effects performance is still on par with everything. Um, I was using the 2022 version of After Effects, the beta. While it does offer multi-frame rendering, I for some reason I think it uses double the RAM at the same time. So the performance worked really well, but there was just some weird memory issues. I mean, After Effects is just so RAM intensive. I really wish that they made a 128 gigabyte option for these MacBook Pros. Maybe next year, maybe next year we'll get like an After Effects special version of it. But yeah, if you take a look at the, the different compositing, it was very smooth. I was able to 
just go back and forth between the both apps. And mind you, I was actually using the 32 gigabyte version at one point and it, it worked really well. Like I, I'm really considering keeping that one. And I tried to do something really intense. Uh, I was calculating the hair dynamics and I was calculating on After Effects at the same time. And you can see how I was switching in between these two apps. I mean, this is something you won't normally do, but the fact that you can do it and it works kind of flawlessly, I'm really kind of pushing for the 32 gigabyte version. So you can save that extra like a thousand bucks or so. I'm so curious to see how this performs in DaVinci Resolve because I've been hearing really good thing about DaVinci Resolve and Fusion in general because I really want to use a different software for compositing because while I do motion graphics, I rarely do it enough to justify using After Effects this much because it's really, it. I, I just think it's really too ram intensive for what i'm doing and i'm hearing good things i mean nuke is kind of way out my budget but definitely i'm going to take a look in davinci fusion to see how it's going to help it if it's lighter just please let me know if it's let me know if you guys heard about davinci fusion and what you guys recommend for a compositor just let me know in the comments all right, hope you guys enjoy that. So let's get into the issues. Honestly, there's one underlying issue and it's more software based. Most of the apps are not optimized. So there's apparently a memory leak. So what, what that means is that After Effects is more power hungry than usual. And that's using both the stable 2022 version and also the beta 2022 version. Also, I actually bought another laptop, the 32 gigabytes to try it out and I was receiving the same results. There is something that's going on between After Effects and there's something that's going on between Mac OS Montreal. I'm not sure which is it. And I won't put it all on at Adobe and After Effects because I was receiving the same results on Maya and I saw the same results using just Cinema 4D. There's a certain memory leak going on right now. Hopefully that'll be fixed in the software update. So given that there was there were such a bad memory leak, I couldn't test any large scenes using trying to use like 40 gigabytes worth of VRAM or whatever because there was such a bad issue once I load a heavy model or somewhat heavy model into the scene, the, the RAM would just shoot over. So that happened in Maya and Cinema 4D and After Effects. So After Effects is always power hungry. Uh, they need to make this with a 128 gigabyte model just for After Effects. It's, I don't know if After Effects itself, After Effects has always been like this. I just think this, they really need to optimize After Effects. So final thoughts, as stated before, even though this laptop has desktop-like performance from single core or multi-core processing, it still needs a lot of assistance for 3D animation and motion graphics. What I was able to accomplish, I was able to do that because I have about 20K worth of computer equipment to back me up. I know there are some services like Octane Render Cloud or some type of render farm that most would use, but remember that this, unlike previous generation, there isn't a way to expand this and have this as one workstation. This laptop would need assistance in some, some way, shape or form. And to be honest, there was nothing that I didn't do that, that I wasn't doing on my MacBook Air. And there's actually another video about it. Yes, this laptop has a better screen, HDR, all of the fun stuff. But majority of the stuff when it came to animation, the snappiness and everything like that, I still think the MacBook Air has the best bang for the buck. I think I think the MacBook Air will be better for most users, especially beginners, because you can still do a, some kind of look dev look development on that little laptop, and it was actually one of my favorite laptops I've owned. Back to the professionals. 
yes, this laptop can do anything you want whenever you want it. You probably have render farms, you'll probably have a even better setup than mine, same or better. Yes, this laptop is going to do everything you want to. No, do not get the Pro, get the Max. You don't want to go lower than what is already showed. Um, between 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes, it depends on your preference, right? I'm going to the 32 gigabytes version. I'll tell you why. I actually don't need a desktop replacement. I just need something that can assist me. And that's what it did. I used it. I was like, okay, I don't really need this much performance because it, the more you put into a laptop, the more you expect it. You see 64 gigabytes of RAM and an eight terabyte SSD. You're going to say, wow, this is this better than my desktop. And then in reality, you're going to need some type of desktop assistance. So it's kind of like a mind thing, but maybe it's just me. So in my opinion, I'm personally going to keep the 32 gigabytes, keep the savings. There wasn't a difference in terms of performance because they both memory leaked the same way. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> they were, they were, they, there wasn't actually a big difference in performance. Um, Obviously you see a performance hit if you open more than one app. Me currently, the most intense thing I will ever do is that Cinema 4D and After Effects swap. But that's just super rare. And I usually close After Effects because it's just a random hog anyway, a RAM eater. So I think 32 gigabyte would be fine for most people, but it's all in preference. You can go get the 64 gigabytes if you really think you need it. You might need it, I don't know. Remember that's coming from a guy with a 128 gigabyte uh, RAM at my disposal. So take it what you want. So yes, I'll be continue testing this. Let's close off the Cinema 4D and After Effects part and let's get into something even more complicated like Houdini, Blender and whatever is out there. Uh, Fusion, Meyer, but stay, stay tuned, stay tuned. You know the usual, like and subscribe. If you find it helpful, you can always support the channel with the links below buy me a coffee i'm not sure if you if you guys want the project files let me know in the comments i might put it up i don't know i'm not sure if you guys even want this so um yeah see you guys on the next one